Look, 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 look. Rat snake eggs. <laughs> Today we have two clutches of eggs to show you. First, a rat snake clutch, and second, a hognose snake clutch. But I just remembered I used the last of our perlite on some bull snake eggs, so... I'm from Minnesota. I can't take the last one. Okay, I'm just gonna get this mixed up beforehand so it's ready to go, and then we're gonna see how many eggs she had. There we go, looks good. It retains its shape when you squeeze it, yet it doesn't drip underneath. There were quite a few in there and they did actually look all good. Oh, hi, mama. How are you doing? Can I check you out? I just wanna make sure you got all the eggs out first. Yep, it looks and feels like it, so that's great. That's always our first concern. She's good to go. And look at these beautiful, white, plump, fertile eggs. These all look fantastic. Oh my gosh. How many did you have, girl? Oh my gosh, not a single slug. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 good eggs. That is amazing and not a single slug. Finally, we have some good luck with the eggs that we're getting from our snakes here. Although I can't complain, we had a couple really good bull snake clutches. Although after that last rat snake clutch, I was a little disappointed, but this totally makes up for it. Look at these gorgeous eggs. Now someone had actually brought up a really good point when it comes to marking the tops of the eggs and that was to mark them before you remove them so that you can keep the same position. Well, when we take them out, we kind of lift them and keep them at the same orientation and then put them in incubation. But I suppose if you wanted to be safe, especially if they're in a clump like this, you could just mark the top here, 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 just so when you re um, remove them from each other, you know which side faces upwards the most. Either way, it really works, and it really doesn't matter a whole lot at this point because they are less than 12 hours old, so the embryo hasn't attached to the side yet, so even if they do roll uh, 180 degrees, so they completely flip upside down, at this point, it's fine because the embryo still hasn't attached. But if you wanted to play it safe because you're not sure when the eggs were laid exactly, you could totally mark them beforehand. All right, let's get them in the incubation tray. Well, this clump is like super stuck together and along the long edges of the eggs too, so it's gonna take a lot of work to remove them. So to avoid risking anything from breaking, I'm just gonna incubate this whole clump together. Look at those beautiful eggs. Like the other clutches we've had this year, instead of just an X on top of the egg now that they're all in place, we're trying to go with themes to keep it fun and, you know, uplifting because of the whole COVID thing. So what could we theme this clutch? Ed suggested food. Let's do food. That's broccoli. I know it looks like a tree, but it's broccoli. What are some easy to draw foods? This egg has a leak. There we go, we have our food clutch. Next, let's take a look at the eggs from this pair. The big one here is our mama, of course, our female. She is just a normal plains hognose snake. And the father or sire of this clutch is an anaconda morph, or conda for short. Although I'm sure you can already see it on camera, the uh, normal or wild type coloration here has lots of spots down her back, whereas the dad, which is the conda morph, has much fewer and more spread out spots down his back. So it's kind of a neat morph here. The the uh, condas also have an all black or almost all black belly along with these beautiful white walls down the sides of their belly. But Big Mama here just laid her clutch, so let's take a look at it. I have not peeked at him. Oh, is that it? Are there just two eggs? What the heck? She was so fat. Oh, oh my gosh, there they are. Holy cow. Aw, really? <laughs> Another 2020 clutch, I guess I should call it. 
<sighs> That's kind of depressing. We have one, two, three, four good eggs. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten slugs! Man, what a bummer. Just four good eggs, but at least mom got all of her babies out or all of her eggs out. That's the important thing. But at least we have four good looking eggs there. And since the father is a condomorph, which is a codominant gene, statistically a two or 50% of those four good eggs should be condomorphs as well. I mean, at least the eggs that she did lay that are good are nice and plump and like they're big. These are big eggs. Oh, weird. Look at this one. This one like has a good egg connected to a slug. I've never seen that before. That's so strange. Well, we had something that was like 50-50 good and slug with a bull snake this year and it hatched just fine. So I guess I'll incubate it. That one is just wonky. There we go, we've got our four eggs. But the question is, how should we label them? What should I draw on them? I have an idea. We're gonna make these avatar themed. Okay, that's my attempted water symbol. Earth. Air. And fire. There we go. We have our avatar hognose clutch. A deal's a deal. I did tell mama that if she laid some eggs, she would get a nice tasty treat. However, since she laid so many eggs, I mean, that's not a huge clutch for hognoses, but it's still a decent amount of calcium for her to use for egg production. So to try to replenish those calcium levels, I'm going to dust this mouse in some calcium itself. Do you want a tasty treat? Oh, oh yes, we do want that tasty treat. There you go, man. She lunged and half of the mouse disappeared. This girl has a little bit of the deflated look after laying a clutch, but really not too bad. She was a pretty big beefy girl to begin with, so I don't think it phased her one bit to lay that clutch. Was that tasty? Okay, let's put you back. Uh, yeah, these were laid a lot later than those uh, rat snake eggs. I was waiting for a second rat snake to lay her eggs, and then she never did. So I'm like, well, I guess we're doing a hognose clutch instead, because this is what came next. But I really want to focus on those rat snake eggs from earlier in this video, because there's something really cool that we're trying to get in those eggs. So let's uh, rewind back in time and check out that clutch again. We paired the mom, which is het scaleless and het amel, to this male, which is also double het scaleless and het amelanistic. So we have a one in four chance for each of those eggs to be scaleless, and we have a one in four chance for each of those eggs to be amelanistic. That means that we have a one in 16 chance that the babies can be both amel and scaleless. And that's what we're going for this year by pairing up these um, snakes. We are trying to hit the odds of getting an amel scaleless baby. So we're hoping we have our fingers crossed because last year we got scaleless and amel from the pairing but we didn't hit the scaleless amel combination. So we're really hoping to get that this year. By the way, if you're not sure what any of that genetics talk meant, we have a video all about snake genetics and you can watch it right here and it should clear up any confusion. Thank you so much to all of the Patreon backers for supporting this channel and thank you to everybody watching and spending your time here with us today as we prepare two new clutches for incubation. I hope you enjoyed and are as excited as I am about these clutches to start hatching in July-ish. Expect them to start hatching in July of 2020 and we'll see you then.